Board of Health meeting to order at 7.06 p.m. Thank you. All right, the first thing is... Um, Get one last copy? Yes, hold on, come on. Okay, here you go, Lori. So, first is the introduction. Um, introductions, uh, Lori DeMollier. Um, Hi, Lori. Judy O'Donnell, you met Liz, and you met Colleen. This is Nancy Perron, our new board of health building park. Yay. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the, on our agenda for tonight, um, the next thing is to uh, review um, the previous um, minutes, which was <coughs> on um, twelve twenty-seven. Thank you, Liz, for typing up some minutes for us. Welcome. So Thank you. Just, yes, just take you a minute to look Even over and um, <laughs> see if there's anything else that needs to be any corrections or anything. Uh, I read through them when you sent the email. It looked good. motion to have the minutes approved as written? Uh, yes, yeah, I'll motion. Lori makes the motion. I'll second. Colleen seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes approved. My name is That's all right, but. Uh, with a little uh, correction to um, my name. <laughs> Colleen's the spelling of Colleen Higgins. An extra nine. <laughs> mm -hmm. My last name is, there's no E. Oh, the oh. Who's that? Okay, two spelling corrections. <clears throat> oh, okay. There you go. Two E's. No, like so we'll take your ones. E and put it in my name. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sounds we're all set. good. <laughs> we can just. We can just just take that little E. And put is it H I G G E N? I N. No, it's my first name that she spelled wrong. Oh, up yeah. under and number un, seven, under. right above seven. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Section B under. Uh, yep. Section. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to write on this copy because this is going to be the official copy that we see. Under that. Okay, so the minutes were approved with two spelling corrections. Uh, the next item is COVID slash flu slash Maven update. Um, and Lori has given us a report uh, yeah, for the Hubbardston Center School. Yes, for the last week, is that correct? Um, and that's actually since oh. we started doing it. So right, the exactly. ones you're going to look at um, probably are probably from the, the 12, right. mm, 14 down. Yeah. The numbers are small. Yeah. Four. They're small numbers. I know there was a lot of kids who were sick over the vacation, but we don't have those numbers. Right. Because Raya only gets what's, you know, what the kids that are actually in school. So mm -hmm. they were out for, what, 10 days over Christmas break. So we mm -hmm. don't know what happened during those 10 days. Correct. Um, I know one of my granddaughters had the flu, type A. And yeah. so it's, it's not even on there. And she has a Harvard Center in school student. And she's better now and back yes. to school. Yeah. So Raya would have no record of that. And to oh. PH did send out a notice and said that there was a huge bump right around Christmas time. Yeah. So yep. that coincides with what you're saying. Exactly. And then most of them got better and went back to school, so it wasn't yeah. like a thing. But it didn't affect school those, attendance. 
Yeah, right. but that's what she has. The RSV seems to be going away, and now it's mostly just the flu and COVID, type mm -hmm. A flu influenza. Oh, that 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 flu is really yeah it's hitting the kids hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even well, much more so than the COVID. Yes, I'd, much. I'd tell them to get a flu shot before. I I've been saying the same thing. I, from what I'm understanding, um, the community health center was saying there's a shortage of flu vaccine. Really? And because I said, why are you only having COVID clinics and not also right. influenza clinics? And they said they don't have the vaccine to do it. So if someone's coming in and saying to the doctor, I want the shot, they're getting it, but they don't have enough to do like a, a full blown hundreds of yeah. doses for a clinic. So mm. that's what I was told. We should go back to the state though, because the state does provide um, children influenza vaccine for free so yeah. maybe we should consider running it if we can get the vaccine if sure we can get the vaccine sure we could get the mrc to yeah this step up a, for that this is a lot of kids well that's from yeah that's months yeah. though but, but we haven't hit the peak yet the peak is is february yeah now what does this mean unknown type that if they had a they don't know if it's type a type b yeah okay. they did, were just told they had influenza okay. Some of them, though, were specifically telling them it's type A, which gotcha. seems to be the most prevalent one right now. Mm -hmm. I know, I know um, Lily Rose ended up with influenza and then got hit with strep throat right on top of that. Yes. Yep. She was one sick kid. And Triaminic, $24 a bottle. Oof. Oh. Yeah, I was I was told by my son that they're having a hard time finding children's Motrin, like the yes. tablets, the chewables, yeah. uh, because the kids can't Tylenol. swallow the pills, yeah, the and they don't like the taste of the liquid. Impossible to find. Yeah, but so they wanted specifically the mm -hmm. the chewables, and they can't find them anywhere. Yeah, the pharmacist said it's beginning to ease. I was just talking with the pharmacist today, and he did say it's beginning to ease. Yeah. Maybe but people stocked I, up and mm -hmm. bought everything off the shelves. And I went to Amazon. Twenty-four dollars a bottle. I just yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Lily needed it, and I just yeah. Everything's so expensive. Wow. But yeah, so Raya's she's emailing me whenever she gets a new case. So That's and I add it, I add it to the Excel sheet, and then I just thank you so much. So at least we know what's coming on with school. Oh, and I I took her um, the three hundred right COVID um, tests our on month. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, and they really appreciated it. The principal was thrilled because these are not expired. They're, they say 823 on them, the new ones we just oh, got. Cool. Eight of 23. And the ones they had at the school that they were using said they were expired, and we know they're okay to use. Mm -hmm. um, but they were, very, they were very grateful to the town for doing that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Judy. <laughs> yeah, Judy filled out the paperwork to yep. get to additional 1800 COVID tests and we also got uh, more masks mm -hmm. and nice. um, gloves so if the school oh, needs great. masks and gloves okay. I'll, um, ask. I'll ask Ryan. you know a few boxes of everything that'd be fine too mm -hmm. sure. and we also have plenty of extra supplies hand sanitizer etc etc down in the trailer as well right so there's hand sanitizer so we're good. masks um, the gloves if they need it for the nurse's office and stuff okay and um, yeah, we were doing uh, screenings on Monday, hearing, vision, height, weight, all that. Okay. So that's we're doing pretty good. Got about four grades done. Sounds Getting good. there. Getting there. Um, have not heard anything from Maven for any um, no, cases. No, except for that so paper. I, yeah. You sent an e you reached out in regards to billing, right, yes. Lori? Yes. Yep. And I do have an answer to that. Okay. Great. Um, so Steve Curry did end up calling me back. Wonderful. Um, so that was um, January third. He called me back. No, that's when I left the message. He probably called on the fifth. Okay. Something like that. I All right. didn't write down the date. But anyway, so he was able to tell me that we are paid up until the end of the fiscal year, which is June thirtieth of twenty three. Okay. So we are paid through the end of June. Um, he also requested, and I don't know if he's emailed you, Judy, or you, Kathy, because he said he was going to, he said he had emailed you before and didn't get a response, um, but he needs, I guess they're, um, the Maven nurse has retired, and they have somebody new 
covering Hubbardston. So they need a signature from us saying that we're allowing this nurse to look at our numbers and things. Yeah, we saw the, the letter. Oh. We so, saw the letter, and that's not really what the the letter said. Well, oh. it didn't define that it, it was for it me. It did not. Yeah. It was, it, oh, it, yeah. It was so unclear. Very yeah, ambiguous. Okay. Okay. But it, so was, so it Steve, yeah, was it from Steve though? Was it from Steve yeah. Curry? Yeah. Okay. And we held off signing without getting an yes. answer back as to so what it was for. That's what he's looking for. He said okay. he needs a signature sure. to give permission to allow Maven for the epidemiologist. He said. For the epidemiologist. Is so. the epidemiologist going to do it? That's what he said. Oh, um, so the previous nurse retired, and he needs our permission to allow this new okay. person to speak with the epidemiologist. Okay, so I, was, okay. I would I would ask for their backgrounds. I, I, I will, I'm still uh, ask I, for background. Okay, backgrounds I'll because I've had some experience with epidemiologists doing the Maven, and granted, they can, but the, the experience that I have is not good. Okay. There were a lot, they skipped okay. over a lot of cases, didn't so follow he, up on a lot of cases. He said to me he was going to try and email one or both of you. Okay. So I will um, reach out to him if I don't get to see an email in the next okay. two, three days. So that's why he said we're not currently receiving anything is because they don't have permission from us. Hmm. Okay. So they need, a, they need a signature. Have that. But it's not totally true. But Dottie McNamara, <laughs> you saw what she sent me. So she sent me all <clears throat> the data right up to that point and... So we have all that, but her, she said they're not doing monthly reports, right? Isn't that what the email said? Mm -hmm. And I sent around. That's what they, I said. Yeah. yeah. Since COVID was on the decline, they weren't going to do that. And it was only for the COVID be, numbers, correct? Yeah, for anything. It was kind of like, well, if something oh, no. comes up, we'll let That's you know, not, but otherwise, there won't be a report that, right, because there's nothing does, to report. That doesn't meet the, the requirements of Maven. Okay. From the state, so I'll just yeah. So you leave them have to talk to Dottie or um, Steve. Remind Steve of state name and requirements. Got it. Yeah, and you were right though. Okay. He did call back, so yeah. The Thank you. Health That's is great. Supposed to be notified of, of every case. Whether yeah. we follow up on, whether we have somebody else follow up on it, it doesn't matter. We're supposed to know about um, every case. COVID was, or anything, or any, anything. So I guess okay. they have nothing to tell us. It's all right. It's what they said. There's no nothing reportable to tell us. I said, oh, okay, because okay. we got the report on that TB, right? But past that, we've had nothing. Well, I can tell you, a little town like New Braintree, you know, in the last month, yeah. it's had a dozen cases. So okay. there's there's things to report. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They need a signature. Yeah. Thank you. No, um, no problem. What else is on my mind in, that, in regards to that? Um, so if we're paid up through the 30th, what does that mean for our public health nurse position? Are we That's holding a, off? Or? It's another bubble of words. Um, there was a mix-up in the accounting of uh, some of our accounts. It's been partially corrected. Um, the basic revolving Board of Health count was showing um, in the red um, but th because things were being charged to it that should have come out of the septic revolving fund. That has been corrected. However, um, I'm meeting, I believe, we're going to be able to meet on um, next Wednesday, January 18th, with Sandy and the accountant um, Kelly. Kelly, thank you. Um, probably through Zoom for Kelly uh, to go over um, the our accounts for the not just the fiscal 22, 23 year, but I want to go back a little bit further. Um, because there's also a question about, um, from Nathan, our new um, town administrator, about our Holden Hospital funds. And um, Judy and, and I have been going through all our files, and Judy did find the um, document from um, 1994. Three. 
93, uh, showing the how it was granted to us, a percentage of the funds. Um, and I have already given one copy to Nathan, and um, there's copies for everybody else to have. Did I get that right? No, I didn't get that. Oh, there's I multiples there. Yeah. Um, Laura, you oh, you have one. Thank you. Um, and here's the original. Here's the original letter that was sent. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyhow, I just um. So, um, in regards to um, public health nurse slash in regard, which is jumping down to. Um, old business part C um, uh, I am suggesting as we had before that until we make sure all of our accounts are in order um, that we have the legal coverage through MPHN for Maven which is required by the state and um, that we hold off um, interviewing a nurse, which she's kindly waiting. In oh, the nice. So the one, the applicant that we had is is it's just waiting for sure. us to hear back. She's not in a rush. She's still interested. Great. Um, but we um, try. I feel that it's important we get the accounts in order before we move forward on any actions with a um, public health nurse, which under the legal bylaws of how a Board of Health operates, we do have the right to hire and fire, um, as stated at one of our previous meetings. Um, just as an addition, um, Dennis has been going back through, he got uh, very interested because his name is all over this original agreement, because um, he was on the Board of Selectmen at the time. So, um, so he's been going back and looking back and trying to trace it through. And he's been adding up each year that it should have, that it should have been added to the account. Correct. And he's gotten up to, I think it was what, 2010 or something like that? 2010, and then all of a sudden, the it started blending together as one account. So he's trying to sort that out as to why and when and who did it. And right. so that's one reason why we're having problems trying to track our holding is because the accounting started merging. So somebody who was doing the accounting. Yeah, combined. They they combined. And shouldn't have. But no. 80% okay. <laughs> was supposed to go to fire department and they even had it broken down so some of it was for equipment for EMS some yeah. of it was for training yeah. so they even had it broken down and then our 20% was for health in any way that we want wish to use it so when the accounts got combined do we know where our 20% went well that's what Dennis is trying that's to what he's, he's out. trying to okay. figure it out you separate know, the two yes and he's hoping to come up by the end of this week he's hoping to come up with some number for us that this is what we should have in our whole thing account. So do we know that, you know, I don't know, a few months ago or more we decided that we were going to take a bigger amount of the fees that were coming in? Um, um, is that actually happening? At this point I can't answer that. Um, we voted that only 20% of excess uh, monies from fees would go back to the general fund. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll get you that date. Okay. Um, now that we have a, a very efficient clerk, <laughs> and I will tell you, in two days, she's accomplished more than I did in a whole week. So <laughs> she's wonderful. Um, so we will backtrack to sort out that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that the line item funds that are listed on the monthly reports are accurate. Are accurate. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm starting there, and we'll work backwards. Okay. Um, and that covers both the public health nurse and 
a little bit about the financial reports, but they overlap right now, so that's why we're talking about all of it. Um, and we'll go further on down the agenda then. Item four is Title V reports. Um, none have come in. Um, I apologize, I don't think I put them in here, but when we signed off on the um, 2023 permits for the Hubbardson Elementary School, and then I call it the little plaza, which is the Hubbardston Market, Giacomo's, and the diner. Those water reports are in with the applications and everything um, is satisfactory. The, the testing was done uh, <coughs> late October and the results were there. Um, I have reviewed, um, made a list for Nancy uh, when I sent out the uh, permit, the uh, approval of the food permits to everyone, that um, several are needing water test reports to come in, and and I will be honest, I'm, I'm one of them at Lady Bug Farm. Um, you know, um, it's one of those things that. I suggest, as in the past, we've had usually till the end of February to get those reports in. Um, just a courtesy thing, nothing else. Um, and uh, so we will make sure that they're all there in time before any inspections start. So, okay. Um, permits to be voted on. Uh, I missed one last time. Um, they had actually turned it in uh, early. Um, and uh, and we have um, the Hubbardston Pizza Palace as a food establishment. And um, I make a motion that we approve their uh, 2023 food establishment permit. Do I hear a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. And then we'll sign off on it. And then today is that. And we'll pass it around for everyone to sign. It's still attached to their application and receipt. So the only thing you need to do is sign the top copy. Under number seven, old business. Um, under bylaws, update, we'll let Judy sign there and then give us a little update where we are. Um, to go back to the permits, what about Republic Trash? Oh, thank you. Copy. Any word from the ones that were missing from last time? So it was we're finding them. Um, so I, I checked. Yeah. <laughs> and all those boxes. So yeah. <laughs> the um, concern with Republic Trash is that um, they filled out the application wrong. So I. Um, they're, they're bad in the home visit, Liam. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so I sent them a letter last week. They sent it because I knew they needed to get it in. Um, we are missing, by the way, it's kind of jumping a little here, E.L. Harvey's trash approval. So we have to reach out to them, make sure they get it in. Um, the one for Republic was FedEx to us with everything except the fact that the application was filled out improperly. And I, you know, I made a note, made a copy, and sent her the right thing to fill out. And hopefully it will return soon. So. Just waiting for to return. And at this point, I'm waiting for the correct form to come in that we can sign off on. Hopefully, it'll be here before the next meeting, as well as E.L. Harvey's, um, which are um, the two outstanding trash haulers. Okay. All right. 
Seems like waste management does really well. Yeah, we already signed theirs. Yeah, so everything was they don't, in. They, they don't, had they all don't the liability the stuff came in for them and everything. Yeah, it's all all they in see, order they seem for to waste management. The ball. Yeah, I think they're a little more expensive, but they're probably a bigger company too. Yeah. Um, right. One of the things with Republic is there. If I uh, when I looked at the paperwork. Um, their main company is out west, a holdings company. So everything that is run in the local office has to get sent out there and approved and then sent back. And that's why I'm sure that the person who filled it out locally sent it here FedEx because the check for the the fee, you know, looks like it took them forever to get. So mm -hmm. um, that's part of the dilemma of companies that are old. Oh, under large holding companies. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's done. Okay, then we'll move on to uh, the missing permits. Um, I checked a, a list that had been kept um, by Gabby when she was working of who she had mailed out to, and um, a couple places never got mailed a permit request. So, um, we're reaching out to mailing those out this week. There were a couple from last time, like somebody was missing, like their tobacco one, but they had yes, another one. Yes, and that that's, that's all going to go out. Those. That's Nancy and I are going to work on getting those letters out tomorrow, and that is on a list of who's missing uh, a tobacco sales permit and a frozen desserts yeah. and a milk permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's all going to go out tomorrow. I'll be spending more time with Nancy tomorrow. <laughs> I corrected those two that list. I oh, put thank the you. Names in so that you can see them. Okay, great. Um, online, when I typed up the um, certificates <coughs> here that we signed, I didn't put a name next to the, the number, which she caught right away. <laughs> all fixed. So, thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. I think we're ready to go to. Um, 7A bylaws. Uh, Judy, do you, you, you've been working on? I've been working on it. Um, and um, the, I, I do have a couple questions. So do you want me to try to track down? Um, we had a bylaw on noise. Do you want me to bring that back in and update it? And also, um, I've been trying to track down um, some um, um, cop, uh, some um, bylaws maybe other towns have, have done on odor since we have a problem mm -hmm. with the <laughs> odor right um, and I had hoped to be able to put I can't I'm not fast tonight sorry um, the the legal from the legal handbook those yep. uh, copies of the odors um, but that the state rep right reports so so. we can we can just put I did notice that in the past um, there were a couple of um, um, bylaws or, or articles that were put in and then they reference back to the state laws basically that the Board of Health was endorsing what does and they were adopting what was in the state as our as our um, our standard our standard yeah so I could look at that too if you want it if you yes you know. odor and um, right noise and noise. Yeah. Wasn't there, so if I remember correctly, when we were doing the noise one, didn't we have a question on what um, the level really should have been? Yeah, it's and in And something there. we were going to look up or yeah, something? Or? In there. Actually, go back to Jim, Jim Murphy, and he had tracked down the decibels and everything. And it's also in MGL. So it's one, in and one of the things she's asked okay. me to do is to go back and reference MGL every single article we have. So when we went over these before and updated them and stuff, no, did we, we lose them? Yeah, we, we. <laughs> they were on they were on the desktop and in the summer when someone came into the office and sh did something to Mal Mallory's computer, um, that was lost. Okay. Because so, right. I'm wondering, why are we redoing? Because we have did all this. I have a noise one at home. Yeah, do I do too. I have. Yeah. So I've been working off the 2006. 
Um, but I've also whatever we could, whatever we've been I able went to through find. My, uh, yeah, because hadn't we done the, the t we did uh, almost the stuff in. We did, we did the, almost the, all the different yeah. sections. Yeah. But yeah. Judy brought brought them in. Yeah, we did a whole bunch. Yeah, of them. yeah. you had brought the copies for us. Yeah, I brought in the two thousand six. Yeah, yeah. So and tattoos, um, and there was one that um, there's a note, a written note on, on the paper copy from. Mallory that said we were going to delete, and that was, was it the size parlors? Uh, yes. Be because um, that's now licensed? That's, that's handled by the state. Okay. Unless, so the way it's to be phrased according to the legal handbook is that sort of thing is uh, like zoos or um, daycares or massage um, parlors is to be um, licensed and inspected by the state unless there's a, a complaint. Any complaint that comes into the Board of Health, we will address. Okay, so I, I will go ahead and eliminate massage in the zoo. Because yeah. I think the <laughs> Wellness Center for a while was doing massage, the, yeah. the Hubbardston Wellness mm -hmm. Center right up here. Yeah. Um, and now they're just doing Reiki, right. um, but there's nothing to say they might not go back to doing the massage now that COVID's over. I so just didn't know. So that's, that goes under the state and they have to be certified massage therapist and then uh, yeah. to the best of my knowledge that is what they should be advised okay okay so we can uh, and and you had a question about zoos so right I guess oh, we can yeah. eliminate that one um, Mike yeah I had a question about whether um, we're well in regards to the burn shirt road Right, E4 has leased out, yeah. I believe it's a lease, to a, what was the name of the, something zoo, yeah. um, to use the facilities and have animals and do presentations. Um, they were from, they bought that. maybe they have, I don't know, we need to know. Um, so that, uh, again, um, they're licensed under the state. And all those. Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. Again, that would be one of those areas where, if there was noise, odor, or complaints, that we have rights to go in and inspect and handle those issues because that's part of our jurisdiction under state law. Um, but do we have to be the licensing? Um, Organization for them, the answer is no. No. But Hubbardston should have bylaws to cover them anyway. Like just we should have a statement about what our policy is that okay. would come under the Board of Health. Okay. I still think we should have that include. I don't think we should exclude it. I think we should make us even if it's just a simple statement that says, you know, we um, accept the state licensing, but if there's complaints odors, noxious situations that under state laws and, and our bylaws, we are allowed to um, go in and inspect and, and ask for corrections. And, and the other thing that I've done is I've tried to, I've re rearranged them a little bit, so I put those, I put environmental health, so that odor, noise, um, they went under environmental health septic systems. Mm -hmm. And then I put under personal health so that we would be dealing with tobacco regulations, et cetera. And that. housing issues. Yeah. Easier to find, too. Yeah, that's that was what I was thinking. Yep. But it turned out to be a lot harder to, to update these doggone things than I expected, especially, you know, I've got bits and pieces of what we talked about and saw yeah. earlier. but. You know, so I've been just going through it, and, and you know, I'll, I'll do the best I can, and then we'll just have to work on it a couple of meetings, and mm -hmm. before we finally say yay, and and but it'll get done at least this spring. We'll have it done, completed, off our list of to dos this spring. So it's moving along. Thank you, Judy. Um. Again, under the uh, cannabis odor update, um, because I was covering in the office, I had not taken time to write the letter, 
and I was rereading the MAHB legal handbook and um, realized that, and I apologize, I don't have the exact code available. I couldn't find it quickly tonight. Um, we're missing one of the points that when you have a noxious situation from a, a company, you're supposed, they tell you how to include three different points. We included two of them, but we didn't include, um, now I'm drawing a blank. Hopefully I'll find it shortly. Um, the third point that they recommend you put in your letters so mm -hmm. that your letters have the power and can't be contested because there's legal precedent for this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so if we follow their <coughs> guidelines, then um, we have the legal right to send the letter, to shut them down if they don't comply, and so on. Mm -hmm. But they have had legal cases before, and it's in this legal handbook. Um, I made one copy for me, but we'll get make sure that everyone has a full paper copy for, that's on the board. We'll get it put in a notebook. You'll get it before in the next week or so. And... Um, I, we just ask that when you leave the board, you turn it back in and we'll give it to the next person. So we're going to try and make sure that we have everyone on the board with all the documentation, like I gave you the letters in regards to the Holden Hospital accounts. Okay. That can go in that same notebook that you would keep so that everybody has, we're all on the same page 100% as to the legal codes. Okay. So the, uh, I'm sorry, I just had a quick question. So the letter that we, um, approved. we had came up with and approved just needs to be added to with that third point? Yes. That, okay. Yes. And then once that happens, then it will get sent out? Then I will bring it back to next meeting and oh, we'll we will re-approve it, it with the okay. corrections and then it will go out. Great. Okay. Um, so, yes, Christmas reading. <laughs> All right, so we're not dropping it. We're just being more thorough with our letters. Um, we kind of covered the public health nurse in that we're holding off at this time. We are covered through MPHN for Maven and um, would like to make sure that we have our finances in order before we um, try to make a vote and hire someone part time. Under septic engineering reviews. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm not as organized as I thought. Um, we did receive one more. Um, under number six, permits to be voted on. Uh, the Flippin' Bird Barbecue is a mobile uh, food permit. They had came in, they have all the paperwork here. I apologize. Um, I did not get the certificate typed up. I missed it. Um, but um, I would like to have a vote to, you can look at who they are. I paid the annual fee for the year, um, which is low. Um, they will be inspected. Uh, so I would like to make a motion that we approve their permit and ask second that you give me the authority to sign this certificate so that we can mail it back out to them. And there are a <coughs> food truck. Yeah, I think they're going to be at yeah. the Hubbardston Road and Gun Club that band. later this year. They've been band. here before. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why they, so there were some over the summer that just came up. So, so they're for the whole year? They have applied for the whole year. Because instead something's of a, coming up soon. Is right. That, yes. okay. Versus a one-day permit, say, for the town fair or um, field day, things of that nature. Or okay. pancake breakfast or something like that. Okay. Am I missing if I did that? Clever name. Hmm? Clever name. Yes. 
Welcome to the bird. <laughs> Barbecue. <laughs> That's a good one. And he's a hawker. <laughs> <laughs> a peddler. <laughs> hawker. Welcome to the bird. Oh, well, I was just going to note that I wanted to. <laughs> we'll just on the yes. I can't think of what night. And I saw it. We'll having a band and, and dance. dance. I went and back because I saw you copying me on the And they said, this guy's going to be outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On this one, we didn't have that printed out, so I printed that. That's it. Thank you. So one, two, and then you know how amazing it is. Three hot dogs is in here, but three looks like it's been changed. Yeah. Okay. So just so you know, good. quick food, I guess. You know, if you're in a rush, you yeah. just stop and not the healthiest, but you know. <laughs> so why would somebody get a one-day permit as opposed to a permit for the year? Just to work, it, just to do vending at the ref field, probably. Yeah. Just for one day. But then if they come breakfast over this. But if they come back again, they have to get another one-day permit, like later in the year. Correct. It's, the one that it's like happen. when the police department does the hit, the Halloween thing. You yeah. have to get a permit yeah. for the hot dogs. Oh, and, why don't they yeah. do the whole year? Well, know? the people because they won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, they do it once a year. Applies the one day. If you're never coming back, you might. Do you know what? Cheaper for a truck. They're only coming to the dance this year. It's twenty dollars for one day and thirty dollars for the year. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, so this one, the bird guy knows what he's doing. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you think it's just head to his I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was here when this guy came in. I want to so, um, yeah. make a couple Associate. notes that we've had um, a septic color permit come in for 2023, but they, they're they not filling out this section about no debt owed and stuff, so we're holding those until we get that sorted out to the next meeting. Okay. There's a couple of those kinds of permits. There. Like Almost that ready. Fine. Almost ready to, to move forward. Okay. I'm trying to stay ahead on this paperwork. Okay, so serve safes are good for are good for five years. That was just yeah, it was actually for me. Yeah. But the yeah. serve okay. safe certificate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they it says 2019 to 2024. Ooh. Okay. So they're good for five years. Yes, wow. they are. And it's online now, too. Yes, yes. it is. Thank so goodness. you can just get on yeah. and do it. So yeah. um, did we hear a, a motion to uh, approve the Flip and the Bird barbecue? Program? I'll approve it. And I'll okay, a second? I'll second. second. Oh, and that includes allowing me to sign the document tomorrow so that it can get mailed out to them. Is that acceptable for this one case? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Listen to the finish so I don't get mixed up again. Alright, that was mine. Alright. Um engineering reviews. We do have a couple. Couple three. Four. first one that has come in, one of the ones that has come in is from lot N13 in Hale Road and there's the paperwork and the approved, Phil uh, Ledger approved the, the plan and just so you can take a look at that one. Those will all have to be individually listed in okay. minutes. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the second one is for parcel B on Lombard Lombard Road. Again, some of these, because of new construction, they don't have an address yet. And um, Phil approved that engineering plan. And here's the folder on all of that. Just to 
left through. This is one of the things that we bring to the meetings each time because um, before I sign off on the building permit that's online for new construction, we need to see that all of these are in order and that there are no, uh, in general, issues with the property site that would affect human safety and water safety. And um, I'm sorry I can't quote the code, but that's why we're doing those each month. I'm trying to make it more clear. And I'll just hold off on passing any extras along at that point. That's this one. That bill rolled pretty well, though, that one. Building 8, Moose Hill Circle, um, may have come before us before, Yeah. Okay. but I never signed off on the review. So I'm bringing it back to the meeting today, for a second look-see, and then I need to sign off once we okay, So this is just a plan? Yes. The rest of the documents. Oh, okay. okay. But the rest of what we had already seen the other, yes. the, the actual... Yeah. I, I included it because I never signed off that it okay. was reviewed. Gotcha. So I'm bringing it back to make sure that all our ducks are lined <laughs> up in a row. <laughs> all our ducks on Moose Farm Pond. Yes. I a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Pipe going on around there. Oh, really? For the, for the yeah. scepter? For the bill, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is 119 Old Westminster Road. Fees that were paid and, and everything that's been included. And Bill approved um, that plan uh, this week, today, actually. And then was able to look it over and make sure we can see it. There's multiple copies of the um, plan there for new construction. Some has to go to building and so on. So sure. there are multiple copies of the diagrams mm -hmm. have to be included. So they just took care of that all at once when they turned it in. Okay. rest of the paperwork for this last one of 53 Underwood Road in Hubbardston. Um, this is just the approved um, engineering plan. The rest of the documents we haven't filed into the folder yet. We're still catching up on filing folders. So you're going to pass these to you. Whoops. So one, the, one on the top is the Moose Farm Hill yeah. and then the other one is different. Oh, this is just a thing. So this is the same thing. It had we've already seen that. No, we had not seen that one before. Um, but for some reason, we haven't managed to get the rest of the paperwork in the folder as of this minute. <laughs> I wish I knew more about this stuff. <laughs> well, you know, it's saying that they the soil one. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, it says. That's why we have Phil Ledger do the engineering review and look yeah. at the soil Cause information. Because they, they do have. Because <coughs> yeah. he's taken a lots of certification. Well, so that one says something about 20 something inches of, of groundwater, but this one is like 100 and something inches of groundwater. It's like, how is yeah. <laughs> So the difference has to do with the results of the perk test that they uh -huh. did. Your engine, your septic design is based on your perk test and the uh, types of soil 
and what depth they're at. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you don't have, um, if you have a, a water table that comes up real high, or you hit uh, con uh, not concrete, granite. Yep. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> some things give me the tickle. Um, then your septic system has to be built accordingly mm -hmm. and to the point that it's almost above ground and they have to cover and build up a huge mound and then put it in so that it has the adequate depth to disperse okay. the, yeah. um, the water that goes into the drainage field without mm -hmm. impacting the environment, the neighborhood, anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that, and you know, the site for the well compared to where the septic is and roadways and land property lines all have to um, be within certain guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty much set by the state, um, san you know, sanitary system. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but those all come into play into the design and the height and the depth of the various things. A three bedroom has to have so many square feet of drainage field and a such and such size tank. A four bedroom has a different yeah. standard versus a two bedroom versus commercial sites. So if it says slow permeability and that groundwater was observed, then, um, you're gonna, then that means you're going to get on above the ground system. You're, you're going to get, get an elevated system. Yeah, yeah okay. and it may gotcha. even be. Um, so. And when they finally came up with that design, it may have been slightly moved, which is Phil Letcher's um, needs to, you know, review the engineering diagrams, uh -huh. which he has, so, why so that, that it meets they all the standards that for a safe board. system. So elevated Brandy. is the type right. that's going to be yeah, higher but so covered. Right? <laughs> oh yes, everything yeah. has to be but, covered. Okay. Right. One yeah, of the requirements of new construction is that there's grass seed sprouting. It before actually final approval the okay. water and when you sign off on the final so is that just yes. newer or is that yeah, because the site just needed a new design mm -hmm. well, uh, it's, uh, it's that wasn't true of, of our house it's, it's not rapid motion so. <laughs> the old <laughs> probably why trench, um but well, certainly for that new construction mm -hmm. um this technically is, this it's is advised actually more for all repairs as and, well and better last longer maybe again so that you don't have a heavy rain and so it's nice this, to see the that the grass will hold the soil in place compared yeah. to the last one you so that there's in the deep you don't, don't end up right changing the, yeah. the, yeah. the um, yeah. 200 the ability of the system the to function properly. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, this is um, the right this is, out the back. What's the depth? Mm -hmm. What does the depth right behind the house? Oh, this is a two. This, yeah, two this family. Is, uh, you don't. Yeah, this, <laughs> it's in your brain enough. somewhere. I, You'll I, think of it I'm at two a.m. I probably will. Um, um, I don't know it all. all. Yeah. I'm not a sanitarian. Oh, the yeah, yeah. But I and older. Uh, did provide for Adult the town um, when we didn't have that, anyone. That's not the one off. To do the job for us so, as, yeah, a, I you said as that. a witness. Okay. Yeah. Because that's not that's not, that's only, not over 55 anymore. It's reverted it back acceptable to by state law, except mm -hmm. for certain things, it is, the one uh, situations the where they, yeah. someone might be yeah. asking for a mm -hmm. variance. So people who bought mm -hmm. into those, I thinking can't it was going to be 55 and over, make appropriate decisions when it. to advise no, for any of that because I don't it. have the education what for that. Like but everything that? else in the witnessing process. There's something in like their I am qualified in their way or whatever it is and it says after and I learned a lot of time this through, they can um, work to change with that the various they did. Um, they folks did. that do so, so, if you're this, see, all of this work. Yeah, so if you're all the different that do this. Yeah, or um point I, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. They, I know they opened quite it up. a bit it's about dirt because I'm a certified no organic farmer. Is that the one and I understand soils it's and yeah, soils. Yeah, it's drainage down like a road and, and it goes yes. over a little bridge um, near that pond. And, and things that I'm required as a farmer yeah, to I understand what is it's being looked at and why. But can I tell you all the individual laws? Laws? No, I cannot. I am not a trained sanitarian. That one's not. No, I cannot. I never said I could. <laughs> never advised anyone that. Oh, oh, so these go in that one too. <laughs> so, I, I all right. That 
Mm -hmm. Lori, did your daughter find system. a septic system? Was it your daughter or your daughter in law Yes, and the problem was is that it was the tank 30 feet, uh, 30, 30 inches, inches the down. The tank was buried too deep. <gasps> oh. It was 30 inches down, so that's why they weren't finding it. It, it was where they were looking, they weren't going deep enough. Oh, wow. So now they've put in that, you know, that green, um, it's an inch, it's called a, tunnel a oh. septic extender. Yeah. And now it's, so it's got that green plastic cap and it's a full oh, okay. thing, so they backfill around it. So now it's just there on the surface. It's called a septic extender. And yeah. so occasionally new systems have to have those put in as well. Yeah, it um, wasn't cheap. Because of the, yeah, just to the layout of the land. Yeah, I think the thing cost like $250 for the extender. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Why it wasn't put in initially, I have no idea, but. Yeah, I, I, don't I don't think I was on the board then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea. But 1994? No, I was not. When I they was... bought the house right before COVID, somebody should have, that should have come up when they, did, the when they did a Title V. That should, have, that should have been known and it was not. Right. So that wasn't cool. Right. right. So, whatever, they dealt with it. Um, so we have, I mean, two, you want to list these? Houses. All these folders need to come back. Yep. All right. So this is. See, look at that. It's very different. So okay, then where was the folder for that? Then? That there was not. Where that? Not that was the only one. This one didn't have a folder because we okay. had approved it before. However, I didn't write on it. Oh, okay. We had reviewed it at our meeting. Gotcha. So I'm gotcha. presenting this signed off one. I signed. Right. We'll sign off on it. Both one nineteen right. Westminster. Initial it right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had um, Lombard Road, Hale, Lombard Road, Moose Hill Circle, Circle. Old Westminster, and Underwood. Underwood. Um, so you all make an, you all approve that we have officially reviewed them and we don't see any yeah. problems. This is in the review. Yeah. Um, so these, so there's no roads on these folders. Is that why I'm getting confused? <laughs> this is Lombard Road, Parcel B. Okay. Yeah, it's got the more traditional um, septic system. I think. Yeah, two, three. Okay, I'll pass the pipes. I know. You have to have three copies of everything. Right. And then those copies, each of those copies have to be in trouble again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, wow. <laughs> Seems like that. Mm. <laughs> Up. <laughs> Have to bring it back again. Um, going down the agenda while I'm finishing this up. Um, new business under. Uh, uh, I, I kind of mentioned this before. Um, we have one, two things, record keeping requirements. Um, I meant to give each of you a copy, but we have copies in the office of what records are considered permanent and how long we need to keep them and when they, and uh, for various things like when influenza clinics were he held here, vaccine clinics were held here, uh, TB, Maven reports, um, all of this documentation that we're seeing here, these are all considered permanent. And um, I mentioned that we have the MAHB legal handbook of which um, 
we'll make sure that very shortly you'll each have your own copy, hard paper copy, um, so that if anyone starts asking you questions, you can refer, read through it and see what has come up in um, cases that different towns brought to the state court system for review and what their decisions were and, and therefore that's what's in this. Okay. Um, I and you want to find a folder um, with all his um, well, historic for historical reasons, uh, reference only of some previous um, legal opinions that the board got. So I, we're going to hang on to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And influenza only needs to be held seven years. Seven. So I found 2010, 2011. So I shredded the, those, I think I went up to 2013. So I shredded those because we're well past the seven years. Yeah. Same goes for infectious disease reports. We can retain, on, retain them for seven years and we can shred them. Okay. So, the, um, so there's no requirement that we have to notify anybody that we're shredding documents? I know the no, school just to. for that kind of thing, because it's personal information, it's individuals. Um, we do yeah. have a email to MAHB for an opinion about um, all these um, land use folders. Yeah, that have all all of this information in it because um, currently it um, 28 boxes that go from A to streets with A through uh, 2M are at Kai. K-Y-O-C-E-R-A. Kyocera. services, they're being scanned mm -hmm. so that they're digitalized. Oh, that's great. Um, which well, is a yes good no. thing. <laughs> However, <laughs> they're I, not here. I had asked <laughs> right. that we hold off um, till uh, March 1st so that we could get everything in order. Um, however... Um, How long will it take them to be scanned? Uh, it can take them up to two months to return the records to us, I was informed, it's from um, Mark, the planning board clerk who sat in on the Zoom meeting. Um, we were not invited. We were not asked if we could, if we would uh, have the records, when and, and how the records were to be taken. It was just moved ahead by the TA. Um, I'm not against digitalizing. I was just hoping to get everything in order before right. then. Yeah. Um, financially, I was told by the TA that the grant money from uh, an initial grant and ARPA funds to pay for this um, doesn't run out or expire until June 30th of this year. So there was time to allow for some organization to occur before the charts were sent out. Mm -hmm. Folders were sent out, but they were sent out anyway. And that's only A through M? Mm hmm. The others are here. So the others are all done? Yes, and um, um, Nancy and I will have access, and whoever the next chairman is will have access mm -hmm. to those records through a private web, uh, website so that when someone contacts us, we can say, yes, there's this, or no, there's that. But we have an email out to for a, um, to MAHB for a legal opinion on to the actual paper copies. Yeah. Do we need to keep them uh, as backup? Do they accept this company's website um, as sufficiently um, high level? Mm -hmm. To provide security and for the, the you know the requirements of being a permanent record, mm -hmm. so we we have questions out there, and you know um, the Kyocera has sent us an email, and and Nathan the TA has given us the information that we need that identifies um, what what addresses are in each box. I also took photographs last Thursday when they took. The boxes away of each identifying box that was taken mm -hmm. <clears throat> just in case we didn't get that email right away because um, we can contact them 
and say we need from box so and so this address we're looking for this and they say they claim that they will respond within 24 hours for uh, a title five for example mm -hmm. on property XYZ mm -hmm. so um, they're trying you know that's that's where we stand mm -hmm. um, so when it's all said and done um, it will be much quicker to find things for people mm -hmm and um, maybe make a copy. All future documents will be scanned here and added into the system. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Yes. Um, so when they take this and they digitize it, are they digitizing it to their server? To a website? To a, yes, a special website. Okay, so designed for this they're kind putting of it system. on a server or the cloud, the cloud, maybe whatever. So if you want to access that, you have to go on to their website and pull information from that. Right. At this point, it's not available to every public, every person in in the town yet. Um, the idea is to make it more um, friendly to the citizens of the town. I don't believe we're at that step yet because we're still they're still inputting and scanning stuff. Well, I guess my question is, so they take our information and they put it on their website. A special one just for our town. Just for our town. So then we take the paper copies that we have and destroy them. That is our is that, question. Is that what we don't Nathan know yet. would like so to know? So I think about this. What would happen if they if so they go out of business or their server crashes or something happens like that? That is my concern. We're done. Well, it may not be through their company. They may actually set us up with our own. Well, that's what that's website and our own cloud site and our our own stuff. Yeah, I don't So it's not like it belongs to them and it's not like yeah, we're going through them to get our stuff. It's like they're just digitizing it and then setting us up with our own database. Okay, so on whether our it's equipment. Well, we have access to wherever it's stored. See, so, but it's, it's not but if it's our the cloud. Equipment. But if it's the cloud or something, then it's whoever the cloud company So it doesn't, I mean, they're not, like, they're not I, I putting it on a thumb drive and you're coming back here and you and we've got this nice computer system, let's just, we've got a nice computer system, we're going to plug this in and make our, and get this on our Board of Health website or, or a server dedicated to all of this information here, in town, in this office. That's not happening? I'm not sure. I think okay, we need clarification. So that's, but that's, you see what I'm saying? Yes, that is the whole issue. And Kathy and I have been going around in circles all week long with this. Yeah. This, that's a question there, for this me. should he have been. He must know that. He must know where it's. it's there, there, should have been some, there should have been a meeting so they'd be able to answer these questions. And I have a question like, okay, the person comes in and wants a copy of, we're looking at sheets this big by this big. How are we going to print this out? How are we going to scan it? Well, well they, no, that's we their problem. No, but I how mean, going, going forward, how are we going to scan um, those big things? So one of the things that has come up, yeah, that's good there question. is a very large scanner that has been donated to the town land use department. It will be going in the room behind us. I don't, and supposedly that can scan maps. I don't know how big a scanner that is, and I didn't see from, I apologize, I didn't look into it enough, on the um, minutes from the select board, the last minutes that they were presenting tonight um, of the donation of this scanner to the town. So it will just I don't, scan, will it also print, or you don't know? I don't can't know. answer that. Go to the minutes and see what you read from them, okay? But yes, not having the old-fashioned hard paper copy I do have concerns. That's why we have reached out to the legal department of the MAHB for um, their advice. I just think because I don't have the answer. Yeah, I, I just haven't gotten back to this. Is yet, so much. So this is so, so critical and they, no, to have this information. So what is name? And if something ever happens, the information is going to be because he knows. It is, it is one of those records right? that's permanent and then he forever. Destroyed all that. Yeah. 
That's yes. That's so um, people like, should be know permanently gone. Where the records are going to be stored? I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't. Yeah. So he and could I, at least I, answer I, those I, questions. I am trying to this. be very reasonable about this now. Yeah. But yeah. But I wasn't mean, it on. I said, is it is it on their what I understood it? from Nate that it was going to um, eventually be the public can come in either use a computer here or whatever to access those it, files. There's still a lot of questions and the bottom line is they should have come and talked to us before they started pulling all of our records out of the file cabinet. Exactly. Yeah. I, I and I totally agree with that, and I um, just think I, that I they should have really sat down and said, "Okay, so this is how this is gonna this is how this is gonna work." Mm -hmm. So when the first batch went out under Ryan, that didn't happen that time either. No, they didn't I, come I, to I, you I'm and question say. I'm that because they said they that M through Z was already done. But yes. when I started working, trying doing the file work that's still sitting on the table in, in the office there. Yeah. When I started putting those files in, I was going out to Williamsville. Now Williamsville, if they would, and I was going out to other t uh, roads beyond M. So well, M um, through the end of the alphabet, excuse yeah. me. It was so M through the M end. M through the end went out first. Um, but why would I see, why would I see files with, for Williamsville Road then? That's W. Because they already came back, right? Mm, back. No. Yeah, that first set came back already. Yeah, correct. Yeah, back so well, we don't have any. We, we don't have. But there's no then we don't have any information on. Did they? Didn't they? Where are they? They said. They what do did. they look like? Yeah. So we don't. We don't so have we don't access have, to it uh, yet. Yeah. The digital record yet. But as far as I know, Ryan. So we don't right, need, started this. Sent out the end of the alphabet during COVID. Right, mm -hmm. and it came back from the same company, from Kyocera, and now Nate is just continuing it. That is but correct. So, did you have a meeting with with Ryan, and did he explain all this at the time when he did the first set? He, you know I'm saying, there's nothing. They did not come back. They did not come to the board. Then they did not come to the board. Now, okay. so we have been to left totally in the blank, uh, in the in the dark with. You know, all a lot of a lot of questions lot of and questions. no answers. So I'm wondering is because that doesn't sound like Ryan. I don't really know him that well. You guys knew him better, but I mean, was that because it was COVID and he just didn't have access to people to have meetings to explain what was it going was on? It was discussed or? early on that he was going to get the grant. We got the grant to get started with this. Yeah. Um, but how it was going to work. I don't recall discussing. Okay, so that was never worked out. But the uh, the the fact that we were getting a grant, he had applied for one, and that we were going to digitize records, that was which is a benefit. If there was a fire in this building, yeah. it would be good to have digitized Backup. records. Yeah, it works two ways. Mm -hmm. You need you kind of need both because none of the systems we have in the in on the earth right now prevents either one from being indestructible. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I'm not against digitizing. I'm not against keeping paper records. I'm just trying to figure out yeah. where we are and some of these questions never did get answered. And we were never asked about when to do we, it. So who's in charge of the digitizing? Is that right now? My yeah. name is Nate, right? So could we ask him? Yeah, I was going to say, can we invite him to one of our oh, meetings? Oh, yes. And he would have come tonight. He, answer some he, of this? he would have come to tonight's meeting, except there was a select meeting as well. Okay. He would have been here tonight. Maybe okay, he's, so and it's maybe okay. In his, maybe in his head, he's assuming that, well, half of it went out already and came back. We must have known all about it, and we <coughs> were informed by Ryan. Maybe maybe Nate's just thinking we're all set, and, no. and that's why we're not being informed of more things. No. But if it was during COVID, then. There were a lot of things going on during COVID. Yeah. yeah. So so stuff happened and right. no one informed the board, but I mean, Nate could just be assuming we know. Like what? Because the one, set, an one set already got sent out before he even got he here. I don't have an answer for that. We'll have yeah. to wait and have a yeah. invite I'd him to, to our next I'd, meeting I'd again. Like to. And, and then and we'll be glad, you know, we'll go yeah. over it then. Sure. Yeah, because yep. we, we have too many questions. And there are just, a lot of questions. We can't answer them. Okay.
Okay. That's where we stand, stand on all of that. Um, there are no new complaints. Um, we just have the same ones that have been open for a number of months. Um, under turnovers, uh, receipts, and financial reports, um, we received a bill from um, MAHB for um, good. It said it was the invoice. The email came out January 9th, but it says it was due you know, October 13th. Wow. But the email is from now, Mon Monday, and um, it's sent to the Board of Health, care of Judy O'Donnell. Um, I made a motion. <laughs> why? I, why to you individually? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Just because yeah. they, <laughs> they like Judy. Sheesh. <laughs> Um, so we have a, a bill for $150. Um, we had, a, there was a food inspection for Ladybug Farm um, done by Richard Stevens. He charged $50 only, which is actually less than we would normally pay. Um, this invoice was from December 7th. It got missed in last meeting. Um, to pay Richard Stevens uh, for the food inspection because I can't inspect myself. And we have um, three invoices. Is it three? Is that correct? Um, yes. Three invoices from Phil Ledger. Um, which one is the first one? That I wrote them up here because they printed out. Um. Okay, we approved the one uh, uh, at uh, December 13th for a total of $800. Um, it has not yet been paid, but we're going to put it in the pile to be paid. Um, then there's the one that came in December. Yeah, that's the one that I think is the one that he is dubbed. It was. He did. Printed both, twice. No, they're both the same invoice <coughs> number, but he added here. See, it's not on here. So this looks like it was updated. Correct. <clears throat> so you might not want to use that first one. Just making sure there isn't any. His bills, when they're sent, come in as two pages. I don't know why, but that's how they get sent. I have to us. figure out how to print it on one page. <laughs> I tried <laughs> many <laughs> times. <laughs> Is it because he's printing in portrait and not landscape? I, I couldn't figure out how, there was no way to print it in, in landscape. Is it directly from the website? I think yeah. so. Um, so we have invoice number 103 um, sent to us, I think yesterday, um, which uh, is a total of $1,400. Yeah, he sent that actually today. Updated all of his fees. You can take a look at all of these. Yep. Do you have 101 to Wait, this that is it? This is, no, that's this one. Oh, and there's 10. So this one we can, we can probably just get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> I get confused if we have duplicates that are not. Sure. So this was one over here of November. <laughs> Your close personal friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> here, well, the more we can get rid of this, the better. Better. The better, yes. This is a lot of uh, files. Mm -hmm. They're all disconnected. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is one of the records that need to be kept longer than seven years. So that's for the one hundred and one records, and those have to be kept Why thirty years. Why did you thirty years? Yeah. Thirty. At, at work, but we didn't get paid for this one. So yeah. He's questioning it on yeah. here. Yeah. That's yeah, why I went in today and went back to November because he records they have to put something in the newspaper. All right, we need to see if this one is still too. Okay, so this is one. Okay, there's just one more. Yeah, almost like you. I I think you better pay that. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Minimize it. Well, yeah. Because because when I sent out the email to them, at least it tells me they got it. Um, I asked them. If I just really printed it out. Thank you. Uh, oh, wow. As a member, because we have no records. Oh. I know Mallory said that because that's what she paid for one year. Yeah. 
101, but which is that one that you can have a date or anything on record. record. So, I get get that. That. so oh, obviously, I believe we were um, behind. <laughs> I believe there's also one invoice number 101 for a total of yeah. $1,200. I believe yeah. we approved this previously. Okay. This is another so email, well. in an email from him today. Apparently he was he has not been paid yet. Fourteen hundred dollars. So um, the wrong So so memberships dues. Now that gets us a directory. It's supposed to give us a password and yeah, the directory we've already, a week and have all the names and addresses. I thought we had paid for every that single one. board of health. So if he hasn't across the check uh, well, I mean I, I recognize the and, addresses um, I'm yeah. not saying that it was on the specific bill but I do address um, but that was what is that, that was his first bill and it, I know that we have access to, to some legal yeah. opinions so I, oh I, okay we'll have to yeah. investigate go back to training and find so something to on the 18th maybe mm -hmm. working so with others collaboration could have been yeah. Previous meeting. So we're so when does it came to Nancy this we afternoon? One year, and one year and I, we have to investigate why it so wasn't this is nine thirteen twenty two. It's his mistake, mistake. And right? So, right. Uh, but it he just it, it was in like the then wrong folder or something. And, you know, no, he maybe. sent it. it, it I looked so back through the Nick's email and it was it was sent. It was on November twentieth, September or October. Oh, so I so it was on November twentieth. Yes. Okay. But so we've been having the so I printed out the email to clerks so you could see that. It got missed. That's uh, quite some time ago. That yes. was Gabby's last week too. Yes. So um, we will pass this around assuming that it was approved and but not paid. Okay. But if not That's approved, not we will approve it, right? $200. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it needs to be paid. checked into it. Yeah. You don't want to, that's a lot of money to pay him twice. Uh, we'll look so we won't pay it unless it's paid. <laughs> we do, pay it. we do so feel so. I you make are a motion. Good clerk. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve uh, payment to Phil Ledger, uh, payment to Richard Stevens, and payment to MAHB for the bills that you just saw. Um, I believe that invoice 101 was paid, but we're not going to write a check until we further investigate because the email just came in this afternoon. Um, I had seen it. And so. Phil's money is the money that we were saying was, was being paid out of the wrong account and they need to fix we'll, that. We'll mm -hmm. figure out why you can't have uh, Some I, of the I, wrong so money was, was Tim Newton's. Oh yeah. It was Tim Newton's septic yeah. um, that payments was that was being paid out of the regular Board of Health revolving account. Okay. Um, so Phil's, we're assuming, is being paid out of the correct account. Yes. Good. Or will be. If he hadn't gotten paid his know, first invoice. Where does the town accountant live? <laughs> Florida? <laughs> Florida. The treasurer lives in oh, Florida. The treasurer No, does. no, the accountant lives in Florida. Oh, the accountant lives in Florida. Somebody lives All right, in Florida. so I make a motion that we approve so those, local to do that. those bills. A second on paying the bills. A second. Lori, all in favor of paying <laughs> Phil Ledger's, Stevens, and MAHB? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a long day. <laughs> the two and three year old took it out of me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> two of them. <sighs> I'm glad those days are over. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, you didn't write on here that we reviewed this. I think that we did, but I'm not sure at this point. I'm. Um, there was a negative TB test from Gardner Care Center uh, at 4 14 Pitcherville Road. Um, the report came was postmarked November 16th, 2022, um, and I did not sign off that we had reviewed it at the meeting, previous meeting. So I'm just going to pass that around again. Um, See, those so are the records that we need to keep. And yes, those are the records we that we keep. should be getting yeah. no matter what, no matter some what. sort of report, no matter what. Yeah, so we were notified, right, initially yeah, when about those don't two this. I need mm -hmm. TB yeah. cases, right? Yeah. One was in Harvest That's why I stuck it on Yeah, yeah. I yeah. wanted to show it to you. Somehow we got information back. Campground form. 
Mm-hmm. But the other one we never okay. got any because he was in the hospital. Oh, oh, but the them? other one we never got oh, any information. The four yeah. cases of TB. I got some on the Dotty email. Or was it just four times that the nurse went to the home, right? Wasn't she going home to make sh- she mm-hmm. was going to make sure the medication was being taken? Yeah, a, they, they have a TB unit. Yeah, so she was follow following up. up so yeah. I don't, um, okay, they actually have to <coughs> go and make sure it's being done. <coughs> yeah. Um, we're holding this. They, they don't just hand it to you and trust you yeah, that you're yep. treating it. Yeah, it says number of cases for on the, the spreadsheet. But we don't have any information on it, see? And then that's the piece that just drives me crazy. Yeah. And then June, June, they come back to us. four cases of tuberculosis and how many are I know. But then he comes back and says, it's because we didn't sign something. So I'm like, oh, okay. The, the email was sent in December to us. Yeah. Okay. Not. I have no idea when she retired. Like, how long did it take them to find a new person and then ask for a signature? Well, they have two, but we have, I have no idea whether they're RN or what. It, the email did not specify it's from it's Steve whether it. what their job role was going to be and what their, whether they, like you said, whether they're a nurse or someone like the he other mentioned person. epidemiologist. He just said, he just. It's the email is not clear, that's why we didn't yeah. sign it. it. It's just that names two people saying that these two people will be covering Hubbardston. And other towns. And other towns. Okay. So they're at this, these two people are actually going to be covering a whole group towns. of towns. 13 towns. So maybe the two people, maybe one's the nurse and one's the epidemi- epidemiologist. We have no and idea. And we need to sign for we don't, Going back that's, around that's on the I, same subject and concerns yeah, that we yeah, have. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why we didn't sign him because he mentioned the nurse and the epidemiologist. Just to that, make that's where we said we're not signing it until we have more information, so there were no credentials after their names. Mm-hmm. And this is come up have again to get because of otherwise we're doing a get negative rabies out. test report that we yeah. got from Gardner and yeah. yeah. facilities. <laughs> well, you know, I know they they've had a bunch of people. Out, Does so. that make sense? Why it's being rediscussed? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, it's it was negative. Um, just yeah. bringing it to the meeting so that I can write on that we did look at it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. Under unexpected subjects, um, it has been a guideline that we have operated under for a half a dozen years. To um, every January, to. Um, Reapprove the inspectors that we have for the town under the Board of Health. And so that would be um, Phil Ledger as sanitarian, and he also does engineering reviews. Um, Richard Stevens uh, is, uh, I found out when Phil is takes a vacation, if something comes up in order to keep it very timely, or you know, should one of, should he get sick or something? Richard Stevens is called as a backup. Um, I recommend that Richard Stevens be a backup contract sanitarian for the town of Hubberston for the year of 2023. And I also ask for your reapproval of me to be the food establishment, the food inspector for the town of Hubberston for 2023. I do this as a volunteer activity. Um, I do not get paid, just so that the town knows that, because that would be a conflict of interest as a um, Board of Health member, committee member. But I do that, and that allows those fees to go back into um, our budget, as well as 20% going to the um, general fund. And I have volunteered to, to do that since I've been on the board. 